I'm a big fan of romance and mystery. Pairing those together even better. And I think broadly the world is on my side on that front. You pull up Google right now and you search romantic mysteries, the chances are it's going to pull up a long list of great classics. Your Hitchcocks, your Bogarts, a lot of film noir most likely. And it's interesting to me that the pairing of romance and mystery in cinema does often tend to be filtrated through a very specific genre lens. Your murder mysteries, crime thrillers, detective suspect, that sort of thing. I mean, I'm aware I'm talking in very broad terms here, but hear me out. Every now and then a film comes along within those genres that just feels like a bit of a refreshing, revitalizing jolt to the system when you watch it. And that's why today I'm ready to add another film to the long list of romantic mystery classics. And I'm willing to bet you probably have not heard of it. That film is Tranque Lauken, which is an Argentinian film by Laura Citarella. It's just been put on Blu-ray by the lovely folks at Radiance Films. Would you look at that? They sent me a copy to check out. I watched it and I was immediately wowed. I feel like I've got to preface everything I'm about to say just addressing the fact that I've been sent this film. That is in no way shaping my opinions on the film. Radiance have not paid me anything to talk about this release. I just wanted to watch it. But the weird thing about Tranquil Alcon, and this is going to sound especially crazy given what I just opened this video with, is that it is not really a romance. And yet it is still somehow one of the most romantic films I've seen in years. Hear me out. I wasn't sure exactly how much to say about the plot of this one because I think a lot of the film's reveals and the way it sort of takes you along this journey is exactly why it's so compelling as a film. So we're going to go as brief as we can with this premise, but essentially it follows a missing woman and a sort of conspiracy plot that involves love letters being left within pieces of literature in a library. That is all I'm going to say, but rest assured um, that it barely scraps the surface of this film overall. I think when you talk about romance in film, you think very quickly about textbook, cliched, romantic dramas, right? People falling in love, people kissing each other and going on walks in New York in the rain or whatever. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I think romance as a genre has a very typical look and feel to it and a lot of conventions and cliches about it. But Laura Citarella, director of Tranquil Lauken and co-writer of the film, is a filmmaker that understands, I suppose, the romance in information and, and learning things. So what's romantic about learning things? Well, I think at its core, romance is really just about learning something about another person. Relationships growing deeper and stronger as you learn, paving the way for love. And in Tranquil Alken, with its sort of series of interconnected mysteries and puzzles, for lack of a better word, that's kind of exactly what we're spending the majority of its runtime doing with its characters. Two characters uncovering love letters in literature and kind of growing closer to each other as they do that, or a couple living together and, and, and building a home with each other. A group of radio hosts sharing stories together on air. All of these different threads in Tranquil Alkin's narrative, I think are all tied together by shared connections. And when presented in that natural observational film language with that slower paced rhythm, you're really given the chance to kind of soak up that feeling throughout. A feeling which is, for lack of a better word, deeply romantic. Laura Paredes, uh, in one of the interviews on a disc, describes her character as constantly being on the verge of falling in love with the unfolding story. And that is such an interesting quote. I can't stop thinking about that in relation to Tranquil Alcon. This idea of romantically falling in love, this uh, sort of desire that comes from a mystery. And it's not just falling in love with people, it's falling in love with the ongoing story and the narrative and, and learning and unfolding things for us on screen. That is what's so deeply romantic about this, but it's so interesting the way that the film is structured as well in that sense, because it uses its first half to springboard itself into a much more mysterious and evocative second half. I feel like I probably should have mentioned a bit earlier on that it is uh, over four hours as a film, so if that puts you off, don't let it. It is separated into two parts. It was theatrically released as a part one and two. And on the release, it is also separated into two discs. I think that's a really interesting way of going through this narrative. And again, it sort of highlights the way that Laura Citarella here as a director is using a lot of the romantic elements of the mystery genre here in the first half to springboard into something altogether more surreal. It feels a lot like a film and a filmmaker for that matter. that's being led by the film on screen, being led by the narrative it's unfolding. And I think that kind of following of impulse there 
is itself innately romantic, right? In fact, I'm not sure what's more romantic than wholly giving in to impulse, going wherever a person may take you or a mood, or in this film's case, a mystery. But it's perhaps one of the reasons why Trenke Lauken as a film is so uncategorizable, I suppose. I know that I've just spent this entire video categorizing it as a romantic mystery, but honestly, it it kind of is not that. I'm only using that as a way into the film. It's the things that jumped out the most to me on first watch of this piece. But there's so many different categories you could begin to slot this film into. I mean, this sort of label of the Blu-ray, for instance, let me read this out to you. Ranked number one in Cahir de Cinema, top 10 films of 2023. This astonishing epic has earned comparisons to Twin Peaks and The Endless in its enigmatic storytelling and playful approach to genre. I read Twin Peaks and I thought, yep, yeah, okay, I'm in for it. But it's so interesting watching the film because you sort of forget all of that through its four hour runtime. And then when it starts to piece those things into the narrative, it ends up feeling so natural, the way they kind of spring out of its narrative at you. I'm always fascinated when a film comes along that is so entirely about obsessions and, and, and mysteries and uncovering things and then watching it and then yourself feeling kind of obsessed with finding out everything about that film and, and learning about it. It's kind of life imitating art in a very strange way. I mean, I don't have any plans to go over to Argentina and disappear, <laughs> but I love films that can get you thinking about the film you've just watched rather than just leaving it to a side. And that is why, honestly, I'm so chuffed to have this one on the shelf. Big thank you to Radiance for sending this one over my way. I'm not just saying it, it's a fantastic release. You should definitely pick it up if you haven't heard about it yet. Let me know what you thought about it as well in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts on this film and where it ends up going. But do let me know if you found it anywhere near as romantic as me or if I'm just being strange again.